One of the things that has uh, made me very happy this Easter season is when I've talked to people, whether they be my priest friends, whether they be um, family members, whether they be friends, and they um, have talked about mass attendance this year. And you know, for the past two years, Easter has uh, been under very different circumstances. Two years ago, it would have been just at the beginning of the pandemic, and we weren't allowed to publicly ce celebrate a mass. Masses, for the most part, were um, um, celebrated, and they were um, shown either over Facebook or YouTube or Zoom or um, perhaps um, on Catholic TV. But we weren't able to gather together as God's family in, a, um, in a, a real way, even though we were still gathered together when we were praying, but even though it was virtually. Last year, we were still in the throes of the pandemic as well, and um, everybody had to wear masks, and people were socially distanced, and not as many people were able to uh, fit into the churches. And um, it, it certainly had a um, kind of a sombering effect, even though we're very glad to be celebrating Easter. But this year at Easter, many churches were reporting that um, the, there was standing room only, that there were a lot of uh, people that had, had come, that um, you know, people were really excited and enthusiastic because it was Easter. And certainly that's something that's very important because the Easter joy that we celebrate is so real and so important. And um, certainly as we came together, many people felt that. But I also think too, that while there was great Easter joy, our minds were not that far from people who might not have been feeling quite the spirit of Easter, or so we thought. When I spoke at our Easter vigil, at, in the homily, I mentioned the people of Ukraine and how uh, most likely they wouldn't really be celebrating Easter this year, even though Easter was going on around them. Because I kind, I, I kind of thought, as um, newscasts are saying, that it would have been too dangerous for people to go out. You know, maybe Easter would be celebrated in people's homes, but it wouldn't be celebrated with um, the, the great uh, feasts and festivities that we associate with Easter. But on Easter morning, I woke up and I had to go over to one of the uh, parish churches a little bit early to make sure a few things were ready. And I turned on the news for a few moments. I'm very happy to say that when I watched the news, I was um, proven wrong. They showed Easter in Ukraine. And as you saw people who were going to church, they were, uh, very, you could see that they were worn out. You could see that th there were great challenges they were facing. You could see that life was not easy. But yet when they spoke to the reporters, who were asking them about Easter, they had a certain joy and a certain optimism about the day, what was going on. They felt the true confidence that God was with them. And I think that was a wonderful thing to see so early in the morning on Easter Sunday, because it reminded me, of, um, in a very, very powerful way, of the joy that is Easter. Now, when I turned on the television, what I was hoping to, to um, find was the Pope's blessing, but it was still a little bit too early for that. If I had been around maybe half an hour later, I would have heard Pope Francis actually speak. But he put what was going on in Ukraine in perspective. When he was speaking, he certainly called for the need for peace, as certainly um, every world leader has done and what we would expect from a religious leader. But of course, it's because Pope Francis is speaking on behalf of the church, when he also spoke, he put into perspective the challenges they were facing, as well as other parts of the world and um, people who were truly suffering. But reminded us that as we remember these people, we were also responsible for bringing the joy of the resurrection to all places of the world as best we can to be part of proclaiming the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. And I think the gospel that we have today certainly puts that into perspective. Because we have Mary Magdalene, who's at the tomb. She's discovered that the tomb is empty. She's weeping. She doesn't know what has happened. She wants to do um, right by the Lord. And as she's weeping, First two angels ask her why she's weeping, 
and then a man that she thinks must be the gardener asks her. But that man who turns out to be, be who she thinks is the gardener turns out to be Jesus Christ himself. And what he does is he um, touches her heart and life in a very powerful way, tells her to go to spread the good news, and um, tells her not to cling to him, but to be out and about with what she was called to do. And Mary ends up going, going to the, the 12, or the, the remaining apostles, and sharing the good news. Even though she's called the apostles to the apostles, they don't quite um, believe what she has to say. They need to encounter the risen Christ as well before they fully believe. But Mary earlier had to encounter the risen Christ. She left the tomb behind, again, you know, using words that Pope Francis um, would use, and moved forward. And I think that as we reflect on this gospel and all that is going on in our world and all the ch challenges that people face, and all, the, all the, um, the, the realities that are not always pleasant. We're called to be the presence of Christ. We're called to proclaim the good news. We're called to be people who believe the Easter message. So I think that as we hear this gospel today and knowing the challenges that our world faces, and maybe people in our lives that we know are facing a difficult time, our prayer, our good works, our actions are meant to show the presence of Jesus Christ and the true meaning of Easter, as we see in the gospel today, and we know is important in our lives as well.